Byron was there at our practice, so we called it Byron South. <laughs> Since you guys are brothers, do you like have it have a hard time like getting along all the time, being in a band and being brothers? Mm, not really. Answer? I don't know. Oh yeah. <laughs> One thing I can answer. I don't know. Um, <laughs> I don't know. It doesn't seem like it so far. This is like the most time we've spent with each other for like in about probably like five or six years. Yeah. You know, and I I just like joined the band in like April or something like that, and um, yeah, these last like months have been. It's the most time we've spent together. And it, there hasn't been any problem, though. Real problem, I don't think. I don't think so. Yeah, it's amazing. <laughs> no fighting on stage. We used to fight a lot when you were, like, little, but... Yeah, I think we got it out of her system. Yeah. You guys, Mom, every time we go home, she's she's always like, so you haven't had any fights yet? <laughs> she's she's waiting for the big Well, the big wait, wait till the end of the tour. Yeah, you guys will right. be killing each other. <laughs> what are some of your musical influences? Like, who do you listen to? Slint. Uh, tar, Sebado. Bitch Magnet. Um, Jesus, Jesus Lizard. Lizard. <laughs> <laughs> These are all champagne bands? No. No, no, they're Chicago bands. Slint is, a Slint is from Kentucky. Kentucky. They were like yeah. part of well, Squirrel Bait. 
one of the guitars from Squirrel Bait. Tar. Tar is a Chicago band. Tar. Oh, tar, tar, tar. tar. <laughs> yeah, we listen to what a lot of Chicago bands tar? and Midwest bands, I think, appeal a lot to us. Were you listening to um, Big Black? I mean, is that how you got involved with the producer? Not really. The way we got involved with uh, Steve was... Um, the Digits had recorded digits, with yeah. him, and we just got this phone number. But, yeah, I mean, we heard, we heard like what he did with the Pixies record. And uh, a couple other records he'd done. Um, yeah. He did the first Tar record, actually. And, yeah, we just... Uh, thought his production was great, it sounded loud. That was what yeah. we wanted, loud production. So. Loud and powerful. Yeah. I, I think like, he translates power really well. I like how you guys after the show say, uh, ask like openly for like a place to stay. <laughs> <laughs> so you've been sleeping on a lot of floors across America. Oh yeah, we, we, haven't, haven't, never, we haven't stayed in one hotel the whole time. All right. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> like, it's a real floor tour. Rockers, yeah. yeah. What's the weirdest experience you had while sleeping on someone's floor? <laughs> Last night. <laughs> No, Last night we played with Legos. Yeah, yeah that, that was, was great. a Lego party. That was yeah. great. What was some other? Th there was this one, one place we stayed at. This guy who kept playing songs, these wonderful songs. <laughs> he had this huge, like, two walls of just CDs, and he kept playing all these wonderful, <clears throat> wonderful songs. But he would only play about twenty seconds of each song, <laughs> stop, and then put stop and put in. something else on, just at going high into volume, it, like at, yeah, for about really, an hour and a half. Really high volume. <laughs> I'm frustrated. Yeah, yeah. yeah. He must have gone through about a hundred records. And it and, uh, and it was this this little like five foot by five foot room with a beautiful. <laughs> ceiling but I mean we were all crammed in here and there were all these other people who we didn't know and 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 the window was wide open and it was freezing cold in there and I was just sitting there going you know a motel almost sounds kind of nice but it was nice it was really interesting what nice. city was this uh, was it New Paltz New York yeah, yeah. That's right. we it did was, an in-store at a yeah, record were, store people there. were really nice but oh yeah once in a while I get I get like I'm not a very social person, <laughs> so yeah. And our drummer is the, is the social guy, and the rest of us. I don't know how much we like parties that much. Sometimes you, we go to a person's house, and they'll they'll be like, "I'm sorry, you know, I we don't have we don't have I, I don't have a big party for you guys or anything, but I have this big TV that you can watch, you know, <laughs> this nice food." And we'll be like, "That's okay, that's what we yeah. like." But you know, other times we go somewhere, and they're just like, "Look, here's all this, you know, here's a big party for you," and you know, and then I have to kind of sit in the corner or just like read or something hope that I don't look like an idiot or something because <laughs> I don't I mean I'm fine when I'm on a stage and I can ignore everybody but when I'm off then yeah I get scared I don't know about you guys I don't like crowds <laughs> but I like small groups of people yeah so what has being on the road done to your sex lives? Huh? <laughs> what? <laughs> we don't have sex lives. We're straight edge. We don't have sex. No sex? I don't have sex. When, when people ask if, if any of us are going out with each other, we usually say we're all going out together oh, because yeah. it's like... It's like one big date. Not to say it's like some kind of orgy or anything. I'm just saying that it's it's it is. it's a weird. It's like a big orgy. It's like a weird. Uh, it's a weird relationship thing. Yeah, it's like a marriage without marriage with four people without any kind of sex life. It's it's very odd. No, I think the sex life is when we're playing. So. Ooh, that's yeah. That's no, it is. I mean that's. Are you saying playing bass is like having sex? It's like the, the, the process of playing in a band is, is a, a, a unified physical, sex. emotional experience. Yeah. So, I mean, you can draw parallels. People always do, but they are different. But that's the kind of thing that takes its place, I, I think, on tour. Okay. Because, you know, we don't, have, we don't have groupies and we don't have hotel rooms. So <laughs> that'll, be, that'll be later. That'll be, you know, 10 years from now. <laughs> um, we were watching the video, If You See K, just now. Um, if you want to tell me a little about it, it's been on 120 minutes uh, twice so far, and uh, amazingly enough, w would you say that's considered your first single? Yeah, yeah. I guess. Yeah. Yeah. Mm -hmm. It's a not a single. single. Yeah, we did have a single, single, but a single of the like our first hit song or something like yeah, the song like, that's been like focused on besides aside from the whole record. The, the song that like they would send to radio stations to promote yeah. as the song to play. It varies. I mean. Yeah. You ask a couple of people what songs they play, and it's 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 strange. They don't always play that song. They play a couple others on the record. Mm -hmm. So it's um, hasn't really be, been emphasized. It's just uh, it seemed like the shortest and most efficient song to make a video for. Yeah, that's yeah the main thing was like making the video. What song would be good for the video? It wasn't really what... 
what would be the big hits for like yeah for radio or something it was just because it was short so it wouldn't be a long boring video and yeah we figured we'd have a better chance of getting it on if it if they could stick <laughs> it in short. places yeah. yeah it's like two minutes long so you know if they say oh we have an extra two minutes we can stick that poster children video in there instead of you know <laughs> the poster children doing inagata de vida you know they have to <laughs> set aside 20 minutes strategic marketing yeah made the video these people um chop shop. chop shop yeah who are wonderful people they're very very nice um and i i'm just i'm really happy with the way the video came out i, I thought i'd hate it because i hate looking at pictures of myself but this is i mean this is great i, I can't believe how well it turned out they're like from chicago based yeah. out of chicago yeah they did a peg boy video and um they're, d they're doing a bunch of other videos, but I haven't yeah. talked to them recently. They do. Bullet so. La Volta. Yeah, Bullet yeah. And things like that, yeah. It looks really good. Um, mm -hmm. Did it cost a lot of money to shoot? Uh, well, we don't know exactly how much it cost. The record label took care of it, but I, from what I from what I gather, it's ultra cheap. Um, the people who produced it, the Chop Shop people, uh, work, their, their day job is uh, at a video production company that does business videos and things like that, so they had pretty much... Uh, nighttime access to editing facilities for free so it cuts down their prices quite a bit who is k k <laughs> it's another cartoon it's a fictional song it's like the the if you see k thing just just sort of came out and the song built around that it wasn't it's one of those songs that was built around just just playing together and that built a, built around a specific idea the idea sort of came from the song right that's about this evil girl <laughs> What was involved in getting uh, the video on MTV, or was that the label just negotiating? The label just, um, they send it to the MTV reviewing board or something. They We had to write the lyrics down. That's yeah, what I remember. Yeah, that was the worst thing, because, you know, 
the lyrics have never been really written down for any of the yeah. songs and, and then, given then to someone to, else. Then they had to submit it for, the, I think they have these um, review <coughs> sessions on Monday, mon- Mondays or something. They review all the videos and decide, um, you know, whether or not they're, they don't have, you know, like evil backwards Satan remarks and stuff. <laughs> and then if they decide that they're okay and should pass the censorship board, then I guess they will be allowed to be played on MTV. They're, they're approved, but that yeah. doesn't necessarily mean they'll get played and then the producers of 120 Minutes decide what songs go on. We heard that they clapped for our video. <laughs> we heard that that was the only one they clapped for. Uh, I that can't... Day. At CMJ? Yeah. No, no, at the, the, at the review video, session. The yeah. TV review session. Got a little round of applause. Yeah, cool. I guess. Cool. That's what we heard. Where, where do you want to post your children to be in 10 years? <laughs> 10 years? Yeah. Mm. We're more worried about 10 months. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. yeah. Um, the moon. Getting through the summer. <laughs> Poster children on, on Mars. Mars. <laughs> well, I, my goal is to play it um, at Tomorrowland, at Disney mm-hmm. World, on, on the little Disney stage. Land. Disney <laughs> Land, yeah. Disney Land, excuse me. Stage um, that pops out of the ground. Yeah. yeah. Where the, all those people dance around? <laughs> yeah, yeah, that's that's my goal. That and, yeah. But not in 10 years, earlier than that. <laughs> yeah. Um, musically, I think the song on the first album. Or no, the, the song on Daisy Chan that I like the most is Space Gun. It's got a, yeah, a yeah. real mystic, gothical quality to it. But what is it about? Boy, that's a really good question. We decided, Rose, Rose yeah. figured it out last week, actually. <laughs> she said it was about Big Brother or something. It, I have this problem with songs where I have one idea, and I start working at it, but then I have another idea, and I decide, oh, I'll change what this song is about, so I'll write some other words for another another idea for the song. But I never finish a complete idea and enough words for all of it so what turned out with that is it's sort of like two or three songs sort of or two or three different ideas like all tangled together and mixed up and it I don't know what it's about it's about paranoia just answer paranoia paranoia basic themes yeah basic paranoia. poster children themes, themes. Paranoia. Paranoia. paranoia paranoia I'll take paranoia for 200 please <laughs>
Jesus. What's your favorite town on the tour so far? I liked mm. Missoula, Montana. And uh, Rapid City, South Dakota was great. I liked uh, Kill Devil Hills, yeah, North Carolina. Yeah, that was great. That was really great. That Kill Devil Hills was great. Because of the crowds or, or the floors or what? Well, Missoula, <laughs> the crowd, three people left bleeding and one guy did like a bat flip off of a foot tall stage. Were they and slamming was, and all yeah, that? Yeah, totally <laughs> slamming. I love when people... When people slam. Well, sure, it's fun for you. You, yeah. can, you yeah. just watch. Yeah, 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 yeah exactly. It's Unless somebody runs into well, yeah, people run into us the all head. the time too, like <laughs> smash into us. But that's that's you know. That's okay. That comes with the territory. Yeah, that's that's great. And Kill Devil Hills was was really weird because it's I just like this little resort town in yeah. North Carolina. It was the off season, so there weren't a lot of people there. There, but it was just this little bar, kind of like, I guess, sort of a surf kind of hangout place yeah. and. Um, it was just really cool, and we stayed at the owners, or like, was it like one of the guys who owns Warner, the place? His beach house. He's, yeah, we stayed at his beach house right there in the ocean. It was really great. Sounds nice. It was yeah. where the, the crowd was really good. Yeah, yeah, yeah the, the crowd was really good. It was down the street from like Kitty Hawk. <laughs> and like nobody's heard, nobody knows who we are. So we go to these towns, and people see us walk in with our, you know, with our little college type coats and you know flannel <laughs> coats and they go and oh there's a girl in the band this band is going to suck or something like that <laughs> and then you know they because people are always saying to me wow I, I really expected you guys to suck but you were really good <laughs> so like we go in you know people are just like yeah well I'll give them five minutes and then you know usually usually people are so impressed and surprised by you know how we sound because they expected us to be so bad that you know usually they come up afterwards and they're always congratulating us and stuff it's I kind of like that but you know once once we start getting, I, I'm worried about this buzz that I think that we have. I'm worried that people are, are hearing that you know, oh, there's this great band called Poster Children, and you know they're gonna come see us and go, oh, they're not that great. <laughs> I'm worried about yeah, that. It's always better when people have lower expectations yeah, than they I have, love that. and then they're pleasantly surprised. Like, yeah, go yeah, up on yeah. stage and go, hi everybody, we're Poster Children from Champagne, and then we start playing. People are always amazed that back. yeah, <laughs> that you know we're so quiet and. Then we get up on stage and, and play kind of loud. <laughs> How do you like touring with the Buzzcocks? That's I didn't like neat. it at first, but yeah, I like it now. I, I like them really a lot. They're very yeah. sweet. Mm -hmm. They're being really nice. Have to you guys us. been hanging out on the tour? Yeah, now a little yeah. bit. I mean, yeah. Not, not. I, I'm afraid to hang out with them too much because I don't want them to get sick of us. <laughs> That's yeah, because we have another week with them. Or yeah, so, so our drummer is hanging out with them right now. So uh, next time we see them, they're probably going to be like. You know, they won't even say a word to us. <laughs> they're, they're really nice. Yeah, they're great guys. 
and it's great to play because there was there would be no way possible that we'd even get ten percent of the size crowds. Yeah. Oh yeah. Um, that we're playing to now that we're opening for them. Yeah. Um, so it's, it's cool to play to ten people, but it's also cool to play to you know two hundred and fifty people. Yeah. So it's really helping us out a lot. Yeah. The, I guess the label arranged the whole thing. Our uh, booking agent um, actually arranged it yeah. uh, and talked to the booking agent for the Buzzcocks, and we were on the uh, Chicago show because. Yeah, she. We we got on the Chicago show probably from Joe Shanahan, the Metro, the Cabaret Metro club owner is like the most wonderful person alive, <laughs> and he, uh, yeah, he he you know gets to get these great shows, and I think our booking agent said, hmm, Buzzcocks are on tour. Let me see if we can get Poster Children more tour dates with them. So she sent a tape to uh, to their booking agent, and, you know, who I guess liked our tape, so we got put on all these dates. Cool. It's neat. Mm-hmm. You all had jobs, I guess, before you were in a band. <laughs> yeah, we did. What kind of jobs did you have? Computer ones. <laughs> Computer jobs? <laughs> yeah. Not all of us, but... Yeah. Me and Rick, were, we used to make flight simulators. Make flight simulators? Yeah. <laughs> the software, you mean? Yeah. 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 Well, some of the firmware, too. Well, I guess... Yeah. Well, I, I was more like firmware stuff. You yeah, were more flight fun. equation. Yeah. Okay. Scary stuff. We both did scary stuff before the band. How about you, Jim? I just was in school really. <laughs> before I the band. Did. Yeah, <laughs> and no real cool jobs like that. You, know, <laughs> you were typical. in school for architecture, though. Yeah, for a while. I mean, it's, it's pretty cool. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. But now we're a band. Yeah, that's right. That's we our have, job. That's all ask, behind you now. Until until we get back from tour. Yeah, and then we need money. <laughs> we'll go so back we'll, like on our knees. To, I'll have to get jobs again. Please, I can program again. I'll even program in C. Yeah. <laughs> I'm trying to learn to program in C right now. Oh, uh, don't. It's a fad. <laughs> is it tough? It's a fad. <laughs> it's a, C yeah. is a fad. Assembler Junior is the fad. only way to go. <laughs> Assembler? <laughs> no. That's my favorite. I heard that's tough, though. No, no, no. Assembler is great. It's, it's, it's really easy. The only reason why... It, it's great because it's very... It's the, the basic... Not basic, but like simplistic form of computer programming, whereas C is a little more built up. C is just for wimps. No, it's not. It's, <laughs> it's, it's not. I, I hate yeah. C. You can't avoid but C. C is the future. It's very portable. But you anyway. Find enough well, geek talk. Yeah. 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 Like We're geeks. alienating our alternative <laughs> listeners. Yeah. I'm probably the only one who, who knows computers in my whole listening area. Well, I doubt it. They're well, out there. Yeah. They're listening. That's right. <laughs> power um <laughs> a lot of good bands from champagne but st louis being a large city you think would have you know equal or better uh quality output in terms of alternative bands but we don't seem to be happening right now do you guys have any advice maybe for for struggling st louis bands move to champagne <laughs> <laughs> the, well i think it's, it's in the, the water it's something in the water, water. Yeah. The water. Yeah. something in the water and champagne well, I, you know, the the Chicago scene is is patchy at some times too. I mean, it, it it's a lot more difficult in a yeah, but it's a lot more difficult in a larger city. Louis. Maybe it's too nice here. <laughs> I, I mean, maybe there's too much to do to start a band, or I don't know. Um, but I I just think in Champaign there's not a lot to do, and there are a lot of people since it's a college town. I mean, you got forty thousand people who are eighteen to twenty five years old, and they're all like within a mile. Yeah, they're all of sitting this around, one area like, you know, waiting till it's five o'clock so they can drink beer and then and you know, go go see a band. So yeah. that helps that there's just such a concentration of audience. Whereas in a big city, you know, all the younger people are spread out. Mm-hmm. So that makes it more difficult to get a, a scene going, like mm-hmm. get get people to regularly go to a yeah, club. Yeah, but there is a scene in Chicago. I mean, I, I'm, I'm it's, it's a lot different in Chicago. I remember yeah. playing in Chicago for like the first two or three years of the band and playing to about five random people yeah, who just wandered by. So, I mean, <laughs> it's a lot harder to get attention in a big city, too, because yeah. word of mouth, you know, it doesn't travel as fast because it's so spread out. That's yeah. why I think... Plus more competition. Right? Yeah, I don't think it's necessarily that St. Louis is bad. It's just Champagne's got certain advantages. Yeah, because it's just easier. I think maybe it has something to do with the arch and the, men, the magnetic <laughs> field it produces. Yeah, that's, that's possible, too. I mean... <laughs> I, you know, if I lived in St. Louis, I'd I'd blame the the arch for a lot of things. <laughs> blame so, the arch. So where's your next stop on the tour after St. Louis? Uh, Columbia, Columbia, yeah. Missouri. Yes, we're looking forward to that. We've heard it's a great town. Yeah. And Jim has friends there. 
Yeah. Friendly faces. We have a place to stay. We yeah. have a floor. Yeah. We were eating already. It's also. not like we like our free. usual show where we, we don't know that we have a place to stay. We have reservations. We, we have reservations on the floor. Yeah. The Buzzcocks were all worried about us. They're like, so where are you staying tonight on our first show? And, and we're like, well, we're staying at that guy with the round blue glasses and the long hair's house. And we're like, oh, you know him? Like, well, we do now. And, and they're like, well, wait, you, when did you, you know, how long have you known him? And I go, oh, about 15 minutes. And they're just like, you know, they're aghast. But they, they know, must have done this too when they were little, like us. <laughs> <laughs> Fifteen years ago. Yeah.
like if if I was going to get a tattoo, you know, I'd get a nice black and white yin yang or something. So first fake tattoos really? I found. No, I'd never get a tattoo. You guys are gonna put them on your foreheads. Yeah, yeah. we're gonna put them on our foreheads <laughs> before, before the concert. Yeah. yeah, we we were going to, but. We decided, like, you know, after the show, we'd have to go into a gas station to get gas and pay for it. And <laughs> we'd have these yin-yang tattoos on our forehead, and it was like... <laughs> See, we're not crazy rock stars, that would be. See, if we were crazy rock stars, if we were the Red Hot Chili Peppers... We'd have real tattoos on yeah, our Yeah, we'd have real yin-yang tattoos on our forehead. What is your favorite insect? Man, there were some in the National Geographic yeah, this was that were great. From New Zealand, what were they called? Oh, they're about this okay. big almost like grasshoppers without wings or something yeah. really yeah they're, they're, they can get to be about this big there's that one eating a carrot <laughs> yeah that was really scary Scare. there was one multicolored insect that was really weird that I found on my floor in our house it was really scary looking I mean it had orange it black like and white dots yeah it was really weird like a very tiny body yeah really really wild you see the EMF video and they have oh, yeah. insects yeah. crawling oh, yeah. all over yeah. Yeah. What else? Was, oh, I was going to ask you guys your favorite color, M&M. <laughs> mm. <gasps> to eat or to I, I look at? I like the at? red ones. Green. It's separate? Okay. The green ones. I, yeah, like I, the like, red ones. I like the green ones. The green ones are good. I don't like the, the brown ones, those, the off-brown ones. I don't like the like they're, ones. they're the really dark brown ones that look almost black, and then there were the, the sort of tan, browny kind of ones. I don't like those at all. I'm glad they brought the red ones back, though. I mean, yeah. you know, this is the 90s. <laughs> We have a sound guy. We didn't have a sound guy for like most of the tour. We've we've only had like we only have two weeks with the Buzzcocks. The rest was just us like touring around playing. Just by yourselves. Yeah, yeah. yeah so we didn't have a sound guy. Now we left it up to chance. Playing playing in <coughs> rooms that are the size of airport hangars, and you know the sound guy's always you know, hey, you guys like Rush or you know, I mean he's just like. He doesn't, he's like, don't worry, I cranked up one guitar and, and the snare drum and the vocals are going to be huge, you know. And I put, all, I put a phaser effect on the vocals and, I'm, you know. It's been like, knows that there's two guitars and stuff. It knows the songs, because we're yeah. going to be, yeah. When you're in a really big place, the... The sound guys are more professional, them. but there's sometimes... They, well, yeah, when you're in a really big place, the sound guys don't understand about alternative rock and roll at all. Yeah. And they just, you, you like go, we like our vocals to be, you know, buried kind of in the mix, and they go, why? <laughs> they, don't, they, don't, they don't necessarily listen to, don't, to yeah. what you want the band to sound like. Because they, they know better. Yeah, they, they know better. Like so Kirk that's up. why we have our own sound guy in big places. Yeah. It's our first time bringing someone else. But I'm so an outsider glad along with us. Yeah, but he's nice. Oh yeah, he's great. And he's big, so he can protect us if we ever get into any kind of. <laughs> Did you see that big guy with the, the bald guy with the tattoo? Yeah. The yes, I meant to ask you about that. Was that like, a joke? Yeah. Or, Being I mean, from St. Louis, you can answer yeah. our question what, about him. I mean, it, I'm I'm sitting there and I'm like, at, at some point, you know, when people were slamming around, and I was I was in the pit there, and I was thinking to myself, the bouncer has a Hitler tattoo on the back of his head. You know, what what is right? That's like, you know. Yeah, I think on? it's for intimidation purposes. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> they weren't really slamming during your your uh, when no, you were up there. No. And then they started when the Buzzcocks oh, went up. Yeah. Yeah. And that guy was just like staring people down, trying to get them to stop. Yeah. yeah. What? Are there a lot of I, he, Nazis? Yeah, I think he works for Mississippi Nights. I don't think he's a Nazi though. Just has. Well, was there a swastika? Did you no, see a swastika? No, a it's like a Hitler cartoon. A picture of Hitler. Really? Yeah. yeah. Back right back. in the middle of, of the tattoo is like, sort of like whatever the floral thing was around it, and then right, right in the middle like a was, was a little cartoon of Hitler. It wasn't a very. I mean, it wasn't. It, it looked a lot more like a cartoon though. Maybe it was like a. I don't know. No, I, I don't think it was. I was a about joke. to ask him though. I was going to ask him. I was going to go up to him. He was just like. And like the one bouncer who kept kept like having to get me to talk to people who kept coming up and offering us to pl places to stay, he like grabbed my arm like this and dragged me away, and I'd be like, "Man, what? what? It was horrible." But his tattoo was fresh because he had it oiled up or whatever he had the it was all oiled disinfected on it. So if you had slapped him in the back of the head, he would have cried. He would have cried. Yeah, he <laughs> he would have died. Yeah. <laughs> Great. Heard, Death by Hitler tattoo. <laughs> yeah, you would have heard a really loud scream. Probably the loudest scream you've ever heard. <laughs> <laughs> it's so great. 
Yeah, actually, you probably didn't have it all done at once, right? Would you have oh, something that no, yeah, they right. don't usually do really big tattoos all at once? Really? Yeah. Oh, so. And it takes so long. Right? Yeah, and it's so painful. I would think, especially in the back of your head. <laughs> <laughs> God. But no, they'd have to do it all at once because he wouldn't be able to shave his oh, head again. Oh, I know. No, I'm thinking. I'm he'd thinking. have to shave his head, what? and if his head what? was raw I mean, from as the he's, tattoo, he's waiting for his head to, not, you know, not be raw anymore. The hair is growing back. Be growing in. Oh. Oh, wouldn't, wouldn't that increase the possibility of like infection? Yeah. Too? <laughs> seemed like there was another guy with like a, a St. Louis Nazi party um, badge on too. I wasn't sure. Every town has its skinheads. Actually, Champagne doesn't have skinheads when like Fugazi plays. Yeah, in, they have to in import town. them. They import them from downstate. Yeah. There were like these. <laughs> they, they're like always these four or five Nazi skinheads who show up at like Fugazi shows. Yeah, and, like, like the hardcore yell, shows. And, you know, and Ian Mackay always you know yells back at him, Hey, fuck you! And they're always yelling back and or no, he he goes, Hey, you know, I love you, and he goes and tries to kiss them, and they get all all riled up and steal <laughs> them or whatever. Yeah. Which is what they did, I guess. One guy's got a big tattoo of a, of a, a spider, a spider, a big web. Ah, oh, boy. And your neck. Yeah, back of your head. Oh, you know, horrible. sometimes those people are maybe drunk or something. Too. When they get when the they tattoos, go get them. Yeah. Oh yeah, that's not, I mean, like but guaranteed. maybe they get maybe yeah, like <coughs> general anesthetic. You know, <laughs> so like yeah. when they're getting their. I think that would detract from the manly act of getting it. <laughs> I think so. Yeah, yeah. yeah. definitely. But I do know there, you know, a lot of, lot of, a lot of drunk guys wake up in the morning with tattoos. Tattoos. Yeah. yeah. It is a combination that occurs. Don't drink and tattoo. Did you ever see what? What is it? Papillon? Is that the movie? There's yeah, like a guy Steve with a queen. Yeah, with Steve McQueen and the Dustin Hoffman. There's a guy with a butterfly on his face, tattooed yeah. on his face, because he was drunk and they tattooed his face. Yeah, I thought that was fun. I woke ha, up this ha, morning ha. thinking that that. Drugs and intelligence don't mix. Just cause from that guy last night. The smart guy. There was this guy who was, you know, really, <coughs> really, like, probably, I don't know, well, just... A smart guy? There was, yeah, smart guy. Yeah, that was it. Sorry, I don't know, I, I don't know what prompted me to say that. I was too wrapped up in the Legos to be... You oh, this guy you went home with last night. Right, right. Well, one of the guys, yeah. there was like a little party. We thing went home on. with these people because they had marijuana. Mm -hmm. You know, but unfortunately, the person who, the, well, no, the person who who needed the marijuana didn't go home with us. So, <laughs> this is like, marijuana. Yeah. He stayed with the buzz cops, Our sound so. guy and Bob so. were looking for pot, and so they decided we were going to stay at this guy's house. But yeah, then they otherwise went with we would have wound up here. Yeah. And you know, and but we had to stay with those guys because they had pot, and it ended up that. The pot smokers didn't stay with them, so we were sitting there like this. Well, playing with Legos, that was cool. Yeah, that was great. Every, you know, the rest of the guys were like, <laughs> <laughs> So Bob was out all night with the buzz cars? Yeah, he's still with them, I guess. Yeah, we're, we, we're just the leaving them. We're leaving them. <laughs> he may not have a drummer anymore. Yeah, well, well we figured he probably that won't anyway. he'll be able to get, get to the next show no matter what because yeah. they're going there. Oh, yeah, so, that's right. Yeah. So you can, can, can hitch a ride got, they've got we 12, can get a hold of him. 12, uh, where they have 12 little beds bunks, on the yeah. bunks on that on huge bus well, stacked up little cubicles it's kind of neat yeah it's, it's cool like on a boat and then they've got two TVs and two VCRs and a bathroom you know we have a how come they don't let you use the bus with them? <coughs> they do. They, they ask. They us. just started. Yeah, this this was like first day. Today. No, I got. They tried to get me on there a while oh, ago. Yeah. What, just to hang out on the bus? Yeah. Because yeah. they always have like tour chicks in there. And stuff. <laughs> I don't like hanging out with tour chicks. <laughs> oh, so they want you there to keep the tour chicks so company? I, no. Oh yeah. my God! Can you imagine? <laughs> so, what's it like to be in a bed? Uh. I don't know. What's it like to be the kind of woman who goes goes to sleep with a a guy in a band? For one night, you could you could do a horrible question and answer session with them. I can't even imagine. I I oh my god! I am so messed up. I can't believe it. Because I don't. Well, know because you don't want to be a groupie. No, uh, I don't know. I just don't. I don't understand. I I don't understand how somebody could ask somebody to go out <laughs> with them, <laughs> like and be trapped in a in a room with them, like and not know who they are and stuff. Somebody brought up the point that you know how. How would you get to know people otherwise? 
I and just, then they asked these girls know. at the beginning of the tour to, to come with them. No, 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 no. This is the, I mean, it, you know, yeah, just like we ask people to sleep on our floors at the end of the night, I think they probably just ask people to sleep with them in their beds at the end of the night. <laughs> so this is just random tour chicks that, that come on the, which is cool, and you guys are going to have to do that pretty soon. It will be our duty. <laughs> have to. Yeah, 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 we're going to have to. Part of your yeah. dedication. That's to right. Band. So, yeah, I mean. It's the lifestyle. It, it Yeah. <laughs> See, I didn't think that kind of stuff happened with like bands like the Buzzcocks. Buzzcocks, yeah, I, I know. It'd be like Bon Jovi, maybe, or uh, yeah, but the, Guns N' had... Roses, but the Buzzcocks. That's Remember, well, the first night, um, um, Bob and Peter Shelley, or Pete Shelley, excuse me, were like sitting and making fun of the girls that that like Steve Diggle was going to hang out with that night. They were like making fun of them, and I thought that was funny, but. Well, that's weird because I, at some point, had decided that Steve Diggle and Pete Shelley were lovers, but I guess they're probably not, huh? No. Well, they're both, like, really short. They're both, like, hang out and sit together and stuff. They look alike. I guess they're not, though. Steve Diggle's much taller than Pete Shelley. Yeah. yeah, but when they're sitting, they're, like, the same height. <laughs> I don't know. I couldn't tell them. I have a problem with... I just have these problems with people. I couldn't tell them apart. You guys had to, like, almost make flashcards for me. I was going to the little product thing and going, okay, Steve Diggle or Pete Shelley? And I'd go, Pete Shelley. And, go, and Steve Diggle. Okay, what about this? There's a song on the Chain Reaction that's kind of about our workplace. Really? Which one? <laughs> Victims Frustration. Lie in their open graves, they let us out. Don't sing songs. Ah, ah, we sit and stare ah, at cathode Are you ever going to sing, sing lead on uh, some songs? Never. Sure, Never. she is. Until I write one. <laughs> It's it's taken four years to get her to sing loudly into a microphone. So I'm it'll take another, really loudly yeah, now too. Yeah, it'll take another four to get her to sing a song by herself. 